Perry Island, Nanawetak Atoll. On the first day designated as D-1, the Cherokee device was removed from the assembly building and convoyed to the Marine Pier. It was then transported by T-boat to Anawetak Island, the base of air operations. The weapon was to be dropped from an altitude of 40,000 feet, and the plane chosen for the flight was an 8-jet B-52. Target for the bomb drop, approximately 200 miles due east of Anawetak, was Namu Island on Bikini Atoll. Chief measuring technique for total yield was fireball photography. High-speed cameras were placed at several stations to increase the probability of obtaining pictures through low-level clouds. The time interval between primary and secondary reactions was to be measured by a long-range technique employing a station 200 miles away on Anawetak Atoll to receive and record the electromagnetic signal of the detonation. This method is a backup for close-in observation of the gamma ray and teller light signals. Experimental participation by the Department of Defense on Cherokee shot involved an intensive study of fallout from a high-yield air burst. YFNBs with sample collectors and YAGs with radioactivity recording units were positioned at distances up to 200 miles from the shot to gain information which will improve our knowledge of the formation, dispersion, and properties of fallout material. Similar information was collected on islands throughout Bikini Atoll. Determination of spatial distribution of radioactivity in the bomb cloud and stem was to be made by rocket-propelled ion chambers, which telemetered data to duplicate receiving recording stations on NU Island and the USS Knudsen. A second major study by DOD was made of free air pressures at varying altitudes by telemetering canisters. These were parachuted from a B-36 flying at 44,000 feet above ground zero just prior to bomb release. The rate of fall was calculated to position the canisters for measurement of overpressures between 1 and 20 psi. Drag characteristics of various structural shapes exposed to blast were investigated by full-scale test models erected on three man-made islands, 20,500, 24,000, and 29,000 feet from the target island, and on Yoroshi, 35,600 feet away. Because of the interest of the Civil Defense Administration in these effects tests, 23 FCDA representatives were present to witness the shot. Sixteen newsmen also were invited, making Cherokee the first megaton detonation ever observed by members of the press. Fallout predictions led to several postponements of Cherokee shot. Inhabited areas to the east, south, and west of Bikini Atoll lay within range of hazardous contamination should the bomb drop to ground level before detonation. This limited the acceptable fallout area to a 140 degree sector north of Bikini. Weather conditions which meet this limitation occur on an average of only three times a month. A second almost contradictory problem arose from the fact that southerly winds around Bikini are generally accompanied by extensive cloud cover. Such clouds could obscure the view of cameras recording the fireball and canister drop, and thus cause loss of data. Similarly, it was desirable that the strike B-52 visually pinpoint the target before making its drop. Other aircraft participating in the exercise presented a third problem. 26 planes flying in prearranged orbits at different altitudes would need to be positioned exactly at zero time. May 21st, 3.45 a.m., the takeoff. Communications between ground and air gave a minute-by-minute -minute rundown on drop conditions. 5.46 a.m., 
From the radio comes word that the B-52 has moved into the flight pattern for its final run. Change of the tone signal will start the sequence timer for electronically controlled instruments. Bomb away. Essentially, no fallout was observed either on Bikini Atoll or to the north where the fallout was predicted to land, probably because the device was detonated over water. We have therefore gained no further information on the question of the fallout from a megaton burst in the air over land. The free air pressure experiments operated properly and will probably give some information in the desired pressure region. The structures on the man-made islands, on the other hand, we're in somewhat too high pressure fields with the blast coming from the wrong direction and hence only partially satisfied their purpose. Some usable data were obtained on the effects planes, especially from the B-52, B-66, A-3D, and one of the F-84s. 